Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching. Yes. Since the gates opened at the original Yankee Stadium in 1923, the recipe has been simple. Lefty sluggers take aim at the short porch, and good things happen, like 27 championships and baseballs disappearing into the Bronx air. The lineage, of course, begins with Babe Ruth, a slugger who redefined the game, making the long ball a prominent part of baseball's language. And if one was good, how about adding another, with the Sultan of Swat batting before the Iron Horse in Murderer's Row? And through the years, it was so. From decade to decade, the Yankees loaded their lineups with lefties that would reach the seats. From old reliable to Yogi, Roger Maris, Bobby Mercer, to Greg Nettles, and Reggie Jackson, to O'Neill and Tino. A formula that stood the test of time. Also, throw in some pretty decent switch hitters who could spin around to the left side and hit the seats with regularity. And now, there's a new member of the club, right out of central casting. Juan Soto joins the lefty lineage and takes a backseat to very few. At the tender age of 25, Soto's statistical resume at his age compares to the best of all time. And that's not hyperbole, that's fact. As Casey would say, you could look it up. The newest Yankee, the lefty that is all right, debuts today in Houston as the Yankees open their 2024 season with a formula for the ages. Everything old is new again as the Yankees take aim at 28. And the journey begins next on Yes. Well, the Yankees are in Houston, Texas to begin the season, the 2024 season. Nestor Cortez and Juan Soto on their way to the Yankee clubhouse. And of course, the captain leads the way. You know why? Because it is time for baseball. MLB opening week presented by PNC Bank. And the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It's the New York Yankees against the Houston Astros in the first of four from Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Yankees Baseball, along with Joe Girardi and Paul O'Neill. I'm Michael Kay. This is the 23rd season of Yankee Baseball on Yes, and it's gone by quickly. And the Yankees are expecting big things this season, and one of the reasons is they went out and got one of the best players at his age of all time, and that's Juan Soto. Well, the Yankees jumped in, and boy, did they make a splash. I mean, they brought Juan Soto in, and he has done nothing but impress people with his in-bats in spring training. Four home runs in spring training. It should only get better hitting in front of big number 99 Aaron Judge. But this is the start of Juan Soto and what he is going to mean to the Yankee organization. I'm looking forward to it. 25 years old, he's done things that very few people in baseball have ever done at that age. Look at this club right here. OPS home run and runs. Jimmy Fox, Mel Ott, Mickey Mantle, Albert Pujols, and Mike Trout. Those are pretty good players. Now, speaking of pretty good players, Yankees reigning Cy Young Award winner, Garrett Cole. He starts the season on the IL with a bulky elbow. They expect him back sometime in June if everything goes well. So the guy who gets the opening day start is Nestor Cortez. Well, Nestor Cortez pitched like an opening day starter in 2022. And in 28 starts, he pitched to a 2-4-4 ERA. And he's got outstanding stuff. He's going to use the four-seamer up against the right-handers. He's going to use it up and away against guys like Michael Tucker. And then you're going to even see him drop down against Jordan Alvarez. So his command is going to be really important. If he does that, he can give him five good innings, turn it over to a very good bullpen. All right, the numbers on the left, well, those are the numbers when he made the All-Star team in 2022. He's trying to get back to that. The numbers on the right, he wants to forget that in an injury plague, 2023. Hey, the Yankees did not have a good year last year. 82 and 80, they did make the playoffs. And you know what? They have a decided chip on their shoulder. When we get back, Meredith Rockwitz talks to Aaron Boone about that next on Yes.
Welcome back to Minute Maid Park for opening day baseball on Yes. Hey everyone, I'm Meredith Morakovitz. There's been a much different feel around this Yankees team this spring. This team is determined to right the ship after a year where they went 82 and 80 and missed the postseason. One thing's pretty clear walking through that clubhouse earlier today, this Yankee squad is ready to go. We are a hungry group. We feel like as a group we, we have a lot to prove. And I'm talking about guys that have had already amazing careers that are hungry with a chip with a lot to prove. And we've, we've got to not really talk about it, but we've got to go show Yankee fans in the, in the baseball world that we're a team to be reckoned with. With DJ LeMayhew on the IL, it's going to be Glaber Torres setting the table today, followed by Juan Soto and Aaron Judge. When I asked Aaron Judge what he thinks this offense is capable of, he simply said, I'm not going to put a limit on it. We all just need to go out there and do our job. Plenty more to come here on the Yes Network. When we get back, the Yankees will face their first test this season. Romber Valdez on the mound, first pitch after the break. Support by Hyundai. Get away with great deals in every new Hyundai. Only the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Visit buyhyundai.com today. By PNC Bank. MLB Opening Week presented by PNC Bank. Brilliantly boring since 1865. And by your local Honda dealers. Contact your local Honda dealer for a great deal today. Well, they did all the introductions before the game here at Minute Maid Park, and there's a buzz in the air. Guys, there's something about opening day. Joe, it's just a special day. Yeah, you have those little jitters in your stomach. You're excited to get off to a new start, a new season, to have a good season, and I think everyone looks for this day. This is a long day for players because it seems to move slow, but then all of a sudden you start playing every day and the season goes fast. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's always a home, you know, it's always a day game. So at least you get that out of the way. But I don't care if it's your first opening day or you've been in the league for 15 years. There's so many things that there's uncertainties. You know, what kind of year am I going to have? What kind of start am I going to have? What is our team going to do? So it is an exciting time. You know, I just sent out a picture. It never gets old, opening day. And it's something that Yogi Berra said a long time ago. He's nothing like the home opener, even if it's on the road. And he's right. <laughs> While the Astros take the field, let's take a look at the starting lineup of the Yankees brought to you by TikTok. It's Torres, Soto, and Judge at the top. Then Stanton, Rizzo, and Volpe. And the bottom third, Verdugo, Trevino, and Oswaldo Cabrera gets to start at third base. And they're going to face Fromber Valdez. You see his numbers from last year, 12 and 11, 3.45. More than a strikeout per inning. And Joe, let's check out the Nissan Pitcher Scouting Report. Well, Framber's moving on up. I think everyone, when they saw this uh, matchup, they thought it'd be Cole versus Verlander, but Verlander's probably down for a, another three weeks, so he's moved on up in the rotation, and is their number one right now. He's a ground ball machine. Since 2021, he leads Major League Baseball in ground ball percentage at 63.5% of the time, and was third in the AL in double plays last year with 22. And on an extra day's rest, one day extra, Last year, 19 starts, pitched to a 2.20 ERA. On normal rest, seven starts, it was a 6.57. Well, he does have an extra day today. Let's take a look at the defense behind him. Chaz McCormick in left, Jake Myers in center, Kyle Tucker over and right. In the infield, Bregman, Pena, Altuve, and Abreu, that's third to first. Yiner Diaz is behind the plate. Jordan Alvarez, the great lefty slugger. He's the DH 
confirmed by Valdez, who's on the mound. Home plate umpire is James Hoy, and he is considered hitter friendly. Fewer inside strikes, calls fewer low strikes. He's the crew chief, and he's his 22nd Major League Baseball season. Rob Drake's at first, DJ Rayburn at second, John Lipka is over at third. Well, for a guy that wants to pitch at the bottom of the zone, that might help the Yankee hitters a little bit. Look at you. Right, yeah. right on it. <laughs> way above it, way beyond us, Michael. So the Yankees about to begin the 122nd season in their illustrious history, which began in 1903. Aaron Boone ready to roll. Trained in Tampa, two games in Mexico City. The team's been here for a couple of days. And the 2024 season is about to begin. Yankees 82 and 80 last year. The Astros, they won 90 games last season. Glaber Torres is ready. Framber Valdez is ready. And let's do it here in Houston. It's a strike and the season's underway. Well, you see how he's on the on the right side of the rubber. It's because of that movement on his sinker that's going away from right-handed hitters. He wants to kind of start in and let the ball work away as well as his changeup. And he'll use a lot of curveballs as well. He's got a very good curveball against right-handed hitters. Did it bother you when a guy stood on one side of the mound or the other? You know what? As a lefty, I like this better. It, yeah. it was worse if they were all the way on the first base side and they kind of crossfired. You, you just couldn't pick up the baseball. Yeah, I know some hitters would say that it's hard to see the ball like a right-hander when a left-hander is that far on that side to see the ball because mm -hmm. he's so far over. And interesting enough, lefties hitting better than righties. Mm -hmm. I think that's why you see three uh, left-handed hitters for the Yankees in the lineup today. One and two. Glaber had a good spring training, hitting 356 in 17 games. Yankees would like DJ LeMayu to be the leadoff hitter, but he's on the I.L. with the foot injury. Glaber Torres moves up to the top of the order. Check swing, did he go? Rob Drake said no. You know, we saw a lot of that in spring training from Glaber, how he was more patient, and he would get in a lot of counts where he got behind. You see him go, 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 stop and would end up working walks. So I, to me, as a hitter, when you're doing that and you're swinging at good pitches, you're going to have a good mm -hmm. year. And the 2-2. Count full. Well, again, I mean, he, not in the panic mode. The two strikes, taking a couple tough pitches there. Labor uses his timeout. And here's the payoff. Struck him out. One away. And now Juan Soto will make his Yankee debut as the 25-year-old left-handed hitter strides to the plate. Four home runs in spring training. Big deal brought him over from the Padres. He and Trent Grisham. And we told you in the open and on the tees, his numbers at 25 were as good as anybody's numbers in the history of the game. Want to know? How do you pitch to him, Joe? Very carefully. <laughs> I always tried to save as many left handers for him as I could. I mean that and that's the thing between two right handers. It makes it difficult to set that up for the opposing team. Two and oh. You look over his career though. I mean he has handled left handed pitching. I mean you're not a superstar until you can hit both. Both sides, righty and lefty. I mean, career-wise, 293 righties and 266 against lefties. So uh, it's not like he's an out against lefties. He is in there on everybody. Since 2018, Soto's OPS is 946. Only one player has a higher OPS during that time. Aaron Judge at 980. Two 
two and one. This is pretty good setup. A lot of managers will lose some sleep over this. Two three hitters. Soto gets on base 421 clip. And Judge, since 2017, no one's hit more home runs than him. 253. His eye is unerring, and he's willing to take a walk. Three and one. This ball's just below the zone. I mean, that's that's a really good take. And the three one. Clips the outside corner, three and two. Six hundred and forty walks prior to this year. Grounded foul. And this is what you're going to see. I mean, Valdez has got to figure out, and, and, you know, every Torres long at bat, Soto long at bat. And, and you know, it, it's because you're taking pitches. You're making him throw strikes. I mean, it, these are just wear down pitchers. Yeah, and when DJ comes back, he's the same yeah. way. I mean, this is, they got some contact hitters. Verdugo's a contact hitter. And, you know, the great hitters seem to be able to just foul pitches off mm -hmm. until they get that mistake that you make. And it's interesting. You're seeing some fastballs at 96, at some at, at 92, and they have different movement. The ones that are harder seem more side to side. The ones that are lower in velocity are going down more. This will be the eighth pitch of the at bat. 3 2. There's a walk. So it's 641 walks. <laughs> you know, the ability to take a lot of pitches is, and swing at strikes is kind of a gift. And all it is, if you can explain it easily is you're able to wait on the pitch much longer than most people are and it, you know he's spread out in his stance he, he's able to really you know figure out what's a strike and what's a ball and now you got big number 99 coming to the plate grounded left side grabbed by Bregman there's one on the first that's a double play five four three Yankees don't score in the first. The Astros coming to bat. Double play. Now Nestor Cortez will take the mound. And this is the Astros starting lineup that he is going to face. It's brought to you by TikTok. Altuve, Alvarez, and Tucker at top. Bregman, Abreu, and McCormick right in the middle. And the bottom third, the catcher Diaz, the shortstop Pena, and the center fielder Jake Myers. And Nestor Cortez gets the opening day assignment. 12 games in an injury plagued year last year 5 and 2, 4.97 more than a strikeout per inning. Let's check out the Nissan Pitcher Scatter Report. Well, he's got some big shoes to fill because he's going to be asked to match up against number ones until Garrett Cole gets back in a couple of months. He has the roadmap. His last start last year, August 5th, he went four innings, struck out eight hitters against this Houston Astros lineup and only gave up one run. Hey, the Astros love the fastball, so he's going to have to put a few wrinkles. He's going to have to use his cutter curveball. 
They were second against four seam fastballs, hitting 278 last year. Only the Braves were better at 283. So here is Altuve. Altuve signed a five year contract extension during the offseason. He has one year remaining on his old contract. He didn't want to go anywhere. He told his agent, Scott Boris, get it done here. So he is signed for six more years with the Astros. You know, it's amazing to me. He's 33 years old. You know, you know he's been in the league for a little while, but this is his 14th season. That just kind of blew me away. He's one of three players through age 33 with 2,000 hits, 200 home runs, and 200 steals. The other two, Willie Mays and A-Rod. Wow. And, and, and I think the shocking number is the 200 home runs when you look at the size. I remember, he stood next to Aaron Judge at second base. I was laughing. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Altuve down on strikes. Let's check out the Yankee defense behind Nestor. Verdugo and left. Judge in center. Soto over and right. In the infield with DJ out. Cabrera gets to start at third. Volpe at short. He won a gold glove last year. Torres at second. Anthony Rizzo at first. Behind the plate, Jose Trevino. John Carlos Stanton will DH. Nestor Cortez on the mound. That one is ripped in the left center field. It's a base hit. Cutting over his judge. Cuts the ball off. And he holds Alvarez to a single. Paul, that guy can hit. There's no doubt about it. I and mean, he's kind of a secret. I mean, he's coming on now. You realize how good he is. I mean, lefties, righties, it doesn't matter. Big, strong, but a fairly level swing and just hammers this ball right back up the middle. Coming off a big year last year where he hit 31 home runs and 97 RBIs. I mean, this lineup just goes on and on. And now you got Kyle Tucker coming in. You know, when I think about these two left-handed hitters back to back in the line, they might be the most underrated two, three hitters in all of baseball together. You see what they've done. They're slugs since 1961. Only Barry Bonds has been better. This is left on left. This is unusual. I mean, look at the breakdowns. I mean, you from the manager's standpoint, sometimes you have to change guys against righties or lefties. Alvarez career hits 301 off lefties which is higher than 292 off righties and again Tucker does the same thing almost the same against lefties as righties. All right so Paul what's the secret sauce why does a lefty hit a lefty well. Well they keep the, you know they they're able to pick up the ball and they keep that front shoulder in and it's not always about pulling the baseball you really have to use the middle of the field to stay in on lefties as you saw Alvarez hit that bullet back up the middle. The weird thing is, as a manager or as a pitcher or a catcher, you'd be salivating two lefties in a row, usually mm -hmm. when there's a left-hander on the mound. And it's like the perfect situation to put them in. But not here because of what these guys do off a of left-handed hitter, pitchers. Still two and two. Andrew, you went over in the scouting report about Nestor, you know, kind of have to add some wrinkles. He's put on a lot of fastballs so far. And I'm look, just looking like again as a catcher, how far do you get away from his strength to try to, to match their strength? Well, you look at how he's matched up against them in the past, and he got him with a lot of fastballs up in the zone mm -hmm. last year. At times he struggled uh, because he physically he was, was not healthy, but that's been a big pitch for him, his four seamer up in his career, and he has to go with his strength right you can't go with a hitter's weakness if it's not your strength go with your strength Astros won the American League West title last day of the season they beat the twins in four games in the ALDS and they reached the ALCS for the seventh straight season they lost to Texas in seven games. Tucker works a walk. 
It's time now, Paul, for the keys to the game, brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Well, the Yankees added the superstar. The Juan Soto era has begun today. We saw a walk in the first inning and a familiar foe, and I mean foe, three times in the, since 2015. They've knocked them out of the playoffs. In both opening days, the Astros have also beat the Yankees, so they got to figure something out here. But the clean slate, that's kind of a good thing. 82 and 80 last year with no playoffs. Much better year ahead. Hopefully for Yankee fans. Here's Bregman. Bregman turns 30 on Saturday. Final year of his contract. He said something interesting. He said, well, I mean, my agent handles everything. He said, they want to negotiate during the season. That's fine. I always wonder why Price said, no, I don't. Well, it's your agent doing the negotiating. Comes to you with a number, yes or no. But he's open to signing a, an extension. High fly ball. Left field. For Dugo back. On the track, makes the play. The runners retreat. Two down. A dangerous pitch. You talk about his strength in the high pitch. But, boy, this, this ballpark, uh, if you keep the ball from the line to the gap, keep it out of center field, very good hitter's ballpark. Brickman just missed that. And center field that used to be the other wall and you had to run up the hill the hill remember? yeah. Yep. I remember seeing Andy Pettit hit a triple here right <laughs> he hit a ball up on that hill. He was quite tired by the time he got to third Let's base see, you know for Andy Pettit to get a triple you got to have some outfielders falling down on the hill and everything else. <laughs> he was a pitcher for a reason. Here's a Bray you. Want to know. Alvarez is at second. Tucker is at first. You know, Jose Abreu has always been one of those guys that just knows how to drive in mm -hmm. a run. You know, his average was way off last year, but he still found a way to drive in 90 runs, 28 in September, had a great fall season playoffs. He drove in 11 runs, 13 games. Yeah, they expected huge things out of him. Came over from... Chicago White Sox where he won the MVP in 2020 rookie of the year 2014 so quite a resume the only thing is he's 37 years old came over to Cuba a little late so maybe he's kind of hitting that wall. Taking you all the way on 3 0 it's 3 1. Alvarez at second Tucker's at first. And the bases are loaded. Well, it didn't take long for a mound visit, huh, Michael? First inning, opening day. And here comes Matt Blake, Yankee pitching coach. Well, you see the Yankees are wearing different road uniforms. They don't have the white piping around the word New York and the white and blue piping on the arm sleeves. Last time they wore uniforms like this, 1973. So these uniforms they wore on the road from 1918 through the 20, 1926 and from 1931 to 1972. That's the changes from last year to this year. Interestingly enough, when they were murderers row in 1927 through the 30s, they wore a road uniform that said Yankees in print across the chest. Uh, Our so history lesson's over, Joe. Are you like saying it? they should go back to that? Maybe they will one day. Yankees wore these uniforms in the Field of Dreams game. A couple of years ago, fans loved them, so they've changed back to everything old is new again. 1-0 on McCormick. There's a strike. You know, the interesting thing about this lineup is Chaz McCormick was their most dangerous hitter against left handers last year. Mm -hmm. And you think you get through those first five guys, those yeah. perennial all stars, and you got to face this guy, 325 off of lefties. Chase the pitch upstairs, one and two. Fourth best slugger in the majors against high fastballs, 358 and 745 slug.
So that doesn't mean that you can't go there. It just means that you probably can't go there for strikes. Mm -hmm. So if a guy likes the ball up like he does, just go a little bit higher than high. And usually they will chase it. He's got him to chase one of them so far. Just missed outside. You get a feeling right here. First inning opening day. What a big pitch this is. Bases loaded two outs. Fans on their feet. They know it too. McCormick takes a stroll. Runners go. Up the middle and through for a base hit. Alvarez scores. Tucker scores. Abreu moves to third. McCormick with a two-run single. It's 2-0 two Houston. Uh, it's a problem with long counts and a couple walks and the next thing you know you get to you know you don't have no wiggle room you've got to throw a strike. So you talked about how good McCormick is against lefties a good pitch right there stays with it and lines it up the middle. Yeah he made a mistake with the cutter he was trying to go in and left it out over the plate and you take a little velocity off it and it's it's a good pitch for a hitter to hit as you were talking about. Yiner Diaz takes outside 1 0. He'd been kind of the quasi first string catcher with Martin Maldonado. But the pitchers love pitching to Maldonado as a defensive genius. And they finally cut bait with him because he didn't hit. Diaz hits, but he's not going to do the same thing defensively. But he does a really good job of locking balls and, and, and there aren't wild pitches when he's, you know, back there. There's a base hit to right. Abreu scores. McCormick stops at second. Diaz with an RBI single, 3 0 Astros. Well, the important outs with two outs, men in base, and. and Astros have really taken advantage of it. There's a ball up in the zone, but not up high enough. Line to right field. The Astros just keep keep it moving. Nick Birdie had a great spring training. He's up early. Cortez, 30 pitches so far. There's Jeremy Pena. Now one thing you have to realize about the first seven games for the Yankees they're all in retractable roof stadiums there'll be no rain outs there's no off days. So if a starter doesn't give you much length you're really going to hurt the bullpen you might impact other games. Well, when I look at the bullpen you have Luke Weaver and Clayton Beater who can give you distance that's the good thing they have two of those guys right now but I mean this is a situation where you want him to get out of this inning and see if he can get four or five. Chopped right back to Cortez. And that'll do it. But they score three runs on three hits. They lead two at the end of one. Houston leads 3 nothing.
Options to say yes. Download the Yes app and stream live games with an enhanced stat overlay. Play along, win cash prizes, and earn Yes rewards to redeem for gift cards and gear. Download now and remember that if you get Yes on TV, then you get the Yes app for free or sign up for a subscription. Well, we go to the second. Yankees down 3 0. Giancarlo Stanton leads off against Valdez. Stanton had an encouraging spring after a rough year last year. Also had three home runs in six games against the Astros last season. Despite hitting 191. Ground ball short. One out. Kind of to your scatter report you're seeing I mean uh, the Yankee hitters is beating the ball in the ground and that just shows you that you know how good his sinker is. The thing is the hitter you know it's coming mm -hmm. and you have to tell yourself hit the bottom of the ball but that's not easy to do. <laughs> you know hitting the ball is hard enough to start <laughs> with but let alone hitting the bottom of it. Anthony Rizzo takes outside hit 389 in the 15 spring training games. Was having a great year last year, had 11 home runs when he collided with Fernando Tatis Jr. of the Padres at Yankee Stadium at first base. Tried to play through it and didn't complain, then started to tell the Yankees, you know, it just doesn't feel right. The ball doesn't look right. He ended up having a concussion. So first 53 games, he had 11 home runs. He was headed toward 32, which is where he usually ends up. But he had won the rest of the year. I mean, if you equate those numbers, like you triple them, 53, you know, you, you play in 159 games or whatever, it's probably a little much for him. But those are great numbers. Well, I mean, that's 33 and 100. Well, I think they'd sign up for that right now with, uh, you know, Judge and Soto. You throw that in the middle of the lineup. I mean, you're, you're looking at a lot of potential for runs. And, uh, you know, that's an exciting thing for Yankees. Valdez with his second walk. He walks Soto in the first, now walks Rizzo here in the second. That'll bring up Volpe. Well, how many at bats did it take you to feel comfortable off a pitcher where you felt like you knew who he was? Because I'm thinking this is Volpe's second time around. Yeah. Right? Second year. You know what? You don't get that mental picture of how they get you out in big situations or, or things like that until you, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 at bats. Uh, you know, one, two game. Uh, that just it wasn't enough. So a couple years. Yeah. Six straight balls out of the strike zone for Valdez. 2 0 on Volpe. Rizzo at first, held by Abreu. It was a strike. Saw those two laughing as they were talking. Think about a couple guys playing in the Crosstown Classic <laughs> in Chicago. One Cub, one White Sox. Yeah, both had really good years over there. Two one up the middle and through a base hit for Volpe Rizzo goes to second Yankees first hit of the season. I was at the cage earlier and watching Volpe take batting practice and this was what he was working on just staying through it up the middle. I tell you what he he was impressive today. Uh, I, he can tell he's put a lot of time and effort in of trying to get away from a slight uppercut and just using gap to gap. Another guy that can really add a lot to this offense. I think to your point a lot of times it's hard to make a lot of adjustments and think a ton during the course of the season. Yeah. You can go home in the offseason and say OK where do I have to get better. Mm -hmm. I worked on hitting the ball the other way and it's paying off. Verdugo he blooms one in the left field. It's a base hit. They're going to hold Rizzo at third and the Yankees have the bases loaded. Well, again the Yankees bouncing right back here now all of a sudden bases loaded one out you got an opportunity where you can get back into this game immediately and what a way to start your career with the Yankees a little blooper to the left. 
something about getting that first hit uh, on opening day, right? It just kind of relaxes you a little bit. You don't know how many games I used to play with my mind. Uh, you know, coming into opening day was always like, God, if I have a great opening day, it's going to be a great year. If I get a hit my first at bat, it's going to be a great year. Then you went 0 for 1. It's like, you know what, if I get a hit today, it's going to be a good year. You just keep talking to yourself how to get off to a good start. Here is Trevino. Bases loaded, one out. In his first season with the Yankees, Trevino got big hits. He's got a big situation right here. Joe mentioned before he has pretty good blocking balls in the dirt. Did a good job there saving a, saving a run. Second lowest rate in all of baseball. Wild pitches and pass balls. No pass balls last year. One and one. You look at him, he's up, he's up. He's getting ready to block the ball, and it's a breaking ball that stays up. One and two. How hard was it for you when pitchers added and subtracted on their fastballs? We've seen what he's doing. Yeah, you know, it's more difficult if you've watched the for the last two pitches, one coming in, one going away. I mean, velocity, you pick up the seams, you, you, you can track the ball. But when you've got it going both ways, where you've got to protect inside and outside, that's where it becomes difficult. See, if they turn two, there's one. And there's two. Six, four, three off the bat of Trevino. Yankees leave two. We go to the bottom of the second. Blueprint. Well, last year it was a revolving door. Left field, particularly, was a barren wasteland for the Yankees. 14 different players used in the outfield. Third most in baseball. They went out, traded for Verdugo, Grisham, and Soto. And, and oh, yeah, they put the big guy, Aaron Judge, in center, and they've got themselves a different outfield. Yeah, a, a much different outfield, I think you could say. Where I think the war for their outfield last year was 1.1. Now you had these guys and with Aaron it's going to be much higher. Here's Jake Myers as we start the bottom of the second. Let's see if Cortez settles down after a rough first inning. One and one. One thing the Yankees were able to do there, Paul, is kind of give them a little break after 33 pitches in the first inning. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a quick one, two, three, which hopefully helps him. Driven deep to left field. There it goes. See ya. A long home run. Three nothing turns into four nothing Astros.
Here's Altuve. And there's a strike. Uh, kind of a nightmare here for Nestor Cortez. Tough first inning. All of a sudden, you, you get a little break. You think the Yankees are going to get back in it. Then you get the double play, and now a home run. Pop up, easy pop up here from Altuve. Torres puts it away, out number one. Yeah, no doubt about this. I don't know what was louder, the hit or the fireworks that went off after it. I mean, this was a missile. Chris Myers, 10 year, 10 home runs on the year last year, but boy, he's on pace to hit 162 so far, Joe. What do you think? Would that be a good year? Yeah, I'd say. Alvarez single in the first. Count one and oh. Popped up, long run for Cabrera. Turns out a room. You know, if you're thinking of pitching to Alvarez with his height, his size, you know, you would think you would have to crowd him. The last time up, they went away, he had a bullet up the middle. Right there, you try to come in and you just miss a little bit out over the plate. That's where he takes you in the seat. So he really doesn't have a lot of holes in his swing. I think the thing that you have to do sometimes though is to pitch him in off the plate mm -hmm. so it so we can't just look out over the plate and be comfortable and you get some swings on that breaking ball like he just got that curveball. Alvarez a fixture the last couple of years in the three hole they've moved him up to the two spot new manager Joe Espada said he wants to put our best hitters on top try to give them more opportunities to come to the plate more often. Five ball judge. He'll put it away. Two outs. Boy, this is when it's got to become a challenge for you when you're behind the plate, Joe. They, I mean, to, to get Nestor Cortez on rhythm, to get through a couple quick innings where, you know, you can get to that bullpen. Possibly in the fourth and fifth instead of you know just mailing it in early. Yeah, you have to forget what's happened. And and the thing is, he had two outs with a couple runners mm -hmm. on in the first inning and wasn't able to close the deal. They ended up scoring three runs. And he got ahead of a lot of the hitters. He just wasn't able to put them away. And it's a team that doesn't strike out a lot. They were twenty right. eighth in baseball in striking out last year. You know, twenty eighth uh, fewest. So it's a team that's gonna grind you. You got to make pitch after pitch. Popped up. Left side. Oswaldo getting his running in. <laughs> He's taking that same route every time, just not getting the ball. You see some of these foul balls, and he's actually lucky to get those back. I mean, as good as Tucker is, I mean, that ball's got a lot of plate, a lot of pitches right down the middle of the plate. Strike three. Oh, good call there. Tucker down looking. So Myers with a leadoff home run. The next three go down. Coming up in the third. At bat number two for Juan Soto. Walked in the first. What does he do in the third?
trade, they acquired John Birdie, a veteran utility player. Uh, the Rays got Ben Rortbet. Yankees initially were carrying three catchers, but that didn't make sense. And then the Marlins, where Birdie came from, they got John Cruz, a minor league outfielder from the Yanks, and Shane Sasaki from Tampa Bay. So that is the trade. Those are the details. Oswaldo Cabrera, though, gets to start at third. We can see more of Birdie there moving forward, and we all get a chance to talk to Birdie, Meredith. Uh, this guy can help the Yanks. No doubt about it, Aaron Boone said. Even when D.J. LeMahieu comes back, he sees him as a super utility guy, a guy he'd feel comfortable putting him pretty much anywhere in the infield. Now, Birdie said it was a bit of a whirlwind over the last 24 hours. You always know it's a possibility that you can get traded, but when the manager calls you over in the middle of infield drills and tells you you're heading to a different team and you're heading to the Yankees at that, it kind of catches you by surprise. He did not get into the team hotel until about 2 a.m. last night and now yesterday when Aaron Boone spoke he wasn't sure who he was going to put at third today whether it would be Cabrera or Birdie when Boone spoke today he said he opted to go with Cabrera because he wanted John Birdie to be able to kind of acclimate himself with the team but Birdie did say that being traded to the Yankees a team that he watched growing up a historic franchise certainly means something to him he's excited to be here and excited to contribute Michael one two count on Cabrera as he goes down swing a little interesting Joe Cabrera said he's gonna hit lefty against some lefties because he feels weaker from the right side as a switch hitter and against a lefty who has more trouble against lefties than he does against righties he hit right hand yeah I was a little bit shocked I wasn't sure what he was going to do there but he threw him a number of good pitches that sinker that started in it came back on the inside corner and then he threw him a good curveball down Sometimes guys will switch in the middle of the game. Next time, I might face him left-handed. Hit sharply, shortstop. Pena fields, and he'll retire Torres. Very quickly, Joe, you, you think the birdie pickup is good? I think it's really good. I made a comment to someone that, like I said, he's a pain in the you-know-what. They're like, he's not a good guy. I said, no, 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 that's not. I was complimenting him. <laughs> he bunts, he runs. He, he's an outstanding player, can play all over. You just got to be on your toes when he has a bat in his hand because he can do so many different things. He used to give us trouble when I was in Philly and he was in Miami. Here's Soto. And there's a strike. It's 4 nothing. Astros are in the third. The opener of the 2024 season. Quickly down 0 2. The trade with the uh, the Padres sent King, Brito, Vasquez, Thorpe, and Higashioka to San Diego for Soto and Grisham. BO2. Breaking ball, strike three. It hung up there, but it must have caught the inside corner. And the Yankees go down in order. We'll go to the bottom of the third. this year name that Yankee so let's see if we can do it play for all of those teams 
303 wins, 4,875 strikeouts, and five Cy Youngs. Now, also, name that Yankee the background music for Yankee fans of a certain age. That's that's music <laughs> to our ears. I'm glad it's opening day. We started with an easy one. I actually have this one, Michael. Yeah, when, when you look at all the teams, you realize this guy's one of the greatest pitchers of all time. Boy, yeah. he bounced around. Yes. Ground ball short. One away. Say, when you looked at all those teams, Michael, the first one was Montreal, and that was my first experience. And I'm talking about uh, the guy that could make Bull Durham look like he had pinpoint control. I mean, he was ricocheting <laughs> balls all over the place. And from a left-hander's point of view, it's not not where you wanted to be in the batter's box. You remember in Montreal they had that plexiglass? I was just going to say, people that don't the know that home. stadium, he whistled one behind my head and hit the plexiglass, <laughs> which is like tw 20 feet behind home plate. I'm like, all right, well, was that intentional? I don't think so. You know who used to like to do that? And it's not this guy, so. Yeah. Uh, Pedro Martinez used to like to hit that plexiglass. Uh, just for to, fun? Yes, to the right-handed hitters. And you were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so can you name that Yankee? Tell you a bit later. We're just gonna play that music as much as we can. I'm gonna download that. I like it. Fly ball left field for Dugo. There. And let's reintroduce everybody. Along with Meredith Margaret's, Paul O'Neill, Joe Girardi. Welcome back, Joe. I'm thank Michael you. Kay. And we thank you for joining us on the 23rd season of the Yes Network. It's the Yankees against the Astros, the beginning of the 2024 season, and the Astros lead this game by a score of 4 nothing in the bottom of the third. Michael, can you imagine? What, 23 years? 23. And we started this thing together, Yes, we right? did. We're OGs. Yeah. <laughs> and how many years did you play professional? Big, uh, big leagues and minor leagues? About 100, I think. I signed in 81 and retired in 01, so 20 years altogether. So you've been a broadcaster now longer than a player. Oh, that's depressing. Huh? <laughs> So let me get this straight. There are kids watching right now. Go, Paul O'Neill played. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you made a comment about the music. Uh -huh. You have to be a certain age. What age would that be? I'm about you know anywhere from you know late 40s to 60s. I would think because that was the the theme song at the beginning of the, the WPIX broadcast. We got the 60s covered up here, Michael. Oh yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Our shows go down in order. We go to the fourth. shop.com check out the largest selection of official jerseys caps t-shirts collectibles and more gear up with your Yankees at MLBshop.com 
Well, I don't know if the Yankees put that sign up, but uh, we go to the fourth inning. Aaron Judge will lead off. I think they were giving Aaron a target there, what they want him to hit. <laughs> Those, uh, that, that box of oranges up there on the train, that's a long way away. Not for him. <laughs> By the way, the song that we were talking about last inning, uh -huh. it's called Here Comes the Yankees, and it debuted in 1967. All right, so I'm four years old. I was six. I was rocking three. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith wasn't even born. <laughs> Mom and Dad probably hadn't even met yet, huh, Meredith? The 60s? <laughs> Three and zero on Judge to see they green light him. Well, he thought that was a strike. The Astros thought it was a strike, but most importantly, James Hoy didn't. So Judge walks. Now, Valdez actually laughing. Uh, and, you know, a three zero pitch from Valdez is really not a, a, a great pitch to swing at because he gets so much movement. Sinkers. I mean, you, you give away in the bat by hitting a hard ground ball. Aaron Judge takes the walk there. Give Stanton an opportunity. Stan grounded to short. That was in the second. And a strike. Tell you what, he's got a ton of movement on that sink. Every I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. And he's really starting to dial it in. He's getting better. I mean, it's all at the, the bottom of the strike zone, and then you know you, you kind of turn one over and break it in. So as a hitter, you're very confused right now, watching one tail away, watching one sink down. And then that that hard breaking ball down and in. That's that tunneling concept that mm -hmm. they, they talk about. They're the same for a long time and then they go different directions. It puts a hitter in a dark tunnel when it works right. <laughs> <laughs> nice block by Diaz in the count one and two. Looks like a sellout crowd here at Minute Maid Park. Four game set between the Yankees and the Astros. Grounded sharply foul. Look out, Louie. Tell you what, there's some ground balls that he hits through the infield that I'm amazed at how hard he hits them. <laughs> I mean, I'd be nervous. Yeah, that's when I, I didn't give a lot of the thought to exit velocity until I watched Stanton. And, you know, a lot of the ground balls, he hits hard, gets through the hole. So, you know, the analytics work on exit velocity when you're talking about somebody that hits the ball this hard. I mean, he hits some ground balls through the infield. The infielders don't even move, <laughs> and it's by him. Can you imagine the fear in a, a guy at third base taking yeah. a lead? I wouldn't want to be there. Gary Sheffield I always thought was yeah. really tough too. He did wag when he really <laughs> ripped the ball down the right down the left field line. Slow roller third base. That's a base hit off the third base bag. That was not good exit velocity. That's a beautiful thing right there. I mean that is a good ground creeper ground crew right there. A level field doesn't roll foul. Stands on the board batting 500 one for two and left the infield yet. Yeah, I would have been curious if he does pick that up. Does he have a chance at Stanton? I mean, he's running decent, but he might have had a shot mm -hmm. at first base. And as an infielder, you got to know, right? right? I mean, that's where you come out early and roll the ball down the line to see what it does. And I'm sure it hasn't changed from year to year. Bregman must have just thought that he didn't have time to get him, so he might as well take a chance. Exit Velo, 81.1. You get out of the way of that. Yes. There's Rizzo. Driven to right field. Catch is made by Tucker. Tagging is Judge, and he'll go and move to third. Well, off the bat, Aaron Judge thought this was a base hit. He got back to tag up late. But good base running to move on to third there. Just, you see Aaron Judge really get off the base and then get back late and still able to tag up and get to third base. And to me that becomes important with his sinker going away from the right hander because we already saw Volpe 
used the middle of the mm. field, and he used the other way. Well, now Abreu has to hold on Stanton. Like, I, I think I might be right behind Stanton in this situation. Give me a little bit more room and less between first and second for the defense. Yeah, this is, you know, early in the game still. You've already down four runs. You've had one big opportunity. Trevino hit into the double play. So these are important outs here just to get on the board, to feel like you're part of this game because Valdez has been able to get that ground ball every time he needs it. Two and zero on Volpe, who singled up the middle his first at bat of the season. Won a Gold Glove last year, but hit 209. Yankees and Volpe think there's more there. He kind of leveled out a swing a little bit coming into this season. He's a 2020 guy in his rookie year. Three and zero. First rookie for the Yankees to do that. Yep, I was kind of surprised. You think about all the great players that they've had. And the 15th rookie in big league history to do it. Verdugo on deck. And the bases are loaded for the Yankees. That's the second time in four innings. First time, Trevino wrapped into a double play. Let's see what Verdugo does. Well, Verdugo fought one off to left field. A little grenade out there earlier in the game. But, you know, every time it seems like the Yankees get things going, they're in the bottom of the order. So you just got to try to scrap here. Try to get back into this game as quick as you can. Now, the Astros have two pitching coaches, Joshua Miller and Bill Murphy. Joshua Miller, though, comes out and has a conversation with Valdez. When you went to the mound, Joe, and talked to pitchers, not as a catcher, so were they even listening? Um, some guys a little bit. Uh -huh. it, to me, it was more about just helping them change their rhythm or giving them a breather. I never gave them anything mechanically. I think the one time I did, Coney yelled at me, right? <laughs> Told me shut back, shut up and get yeah, back there and catch, yeah. right? So, you catch, I pitch. Let's, let's keep it that way. Yeah, so I, I learned my lesson pretty quickly. So here is Verdugo. First game is a yank. Valdez goes from the full windup. Want to know? Valdez has walked four. Verdugo is a doubles machine, as you can see. Fourth in baseball since 2021. And you would think with Volpe's speed at first base, a double would probably mm. score. And unless it's a double maybe right down the left field line with the, the short outfield and left. But any other double would probably score three. The 2-0. There's a strike. I mean, if you're a hitter, Paul, I would think that's the sinker you're looking for, that one that's up in the zone. Yeah, you're right. That that ball kind of tails horizontally. That's the ball you can still hit hard the other way. You just got to try to stay within yourself as a hitter here. You try to do too much, you end up grounded into another double play. And the other thing with that sinker up, it's it's the chances of you putting it on the ground is what he won mm -hmm. are less and less. I mean, last time he fought that ball off the left field like he got it in the air and fought it off the left field. Soft ground ball, second base. There's one, and there's two. Another bases loaded jam detonated by a double play.
you by Toyota, the official hybrid vehicles of the Yankees. And today's picture was submitted by Chris. His son was able to snag an Aaron Judge autograph down at spring training this year. He'll keep that forever, hopefully. Use the hashtag Toyota Pinstripe Pride. Mention yes in pictures you post to social media to reflect your love for the Bronx Bombers, and we might spotlight you in a future game. Diaz swings and misses as Cortez has settled down with a 1-2-3 inning. He's retired six in a row after the Myers home run. That's an interesting getup. <laughs> Oswaldo. Seven in a row. A lefty starting for the Yankees, but a lefty was throwing batting practice for the Yankees today. Andy oh, Pettit looked good. Old tired lefty yeah. is what you call him, right? <laughs> I was watching him out there. He can still throw strikes. You know, he can still move the ball in and out. Some of the players, I was very surprised because I, I said, do you have a four-seamer? I was talking to Andy, and he's like, no, they want me to cut it and sink. I'm like, really? Pena with a single. Maybe more. Cut off by Verdugo. Going for two is Pena, and it is more. He gets a double. I'll tell you what, Pena hits this ball hard and he gets out of the box and that's what makes this play because Verdugo made a great play out there in left field. He slides in there, cuts it off, bounces up, and throw a little offline, but still Pena going all the way. You see that sun coming through the, the windows out here, roof closed, but you would wonder on a beautiful day why the roof closed. Well, you're going to get tough shadows uh, if this roof was open. With the starting time today. I don't get why you build retractable roofs if they're not open on days like this. Just build a roof. I mean, it's a beautiful day out. Am I supposed to? You know what? I feel bad because you, I ask you questions, you always give me answers. You right. ask me a question, I, I don't know the answer to this. <laughs> I don't know it either. <laughs> Is there rain in the forecast? No. Somewhere. Just not in Houston. In New York. Yeah. Do you think it's the pitcher's choice? I'm sure the, the, the ballpark plays differently. Swing and a miss. Myers down on strikes, two away. Well, this is one of these situations. Down four runs. Uh, now you've got an opportunity, and, and Nestor has not been able to get this, you know, the final out on those innings where he gave up the two. Uh, Two out runs, so this is an opportunity with a great hitter and Jose, uh, Jose Altuve to try to get out of this, keep the Yankees right where they are. And this is where you got to be careful first pitch because he loves to jump that first pitch. And you know what? We've seen a little different approach the last couple of hitters. Some sinkers running away from mm -hmm. right handed hitters, and there was probably the first changeup he's thrown all game. Third time through. You notice what he's kind of gotten away from the you know some of the hesitations and the, some of the different arm angles. I don't know if it's just because he's been struggling a little bit today or you know if, if he's not comfortable doing that as much. I, I would think that it would be a confidence thing when you feel like everything you do whatever you want you feel like doing it. Maybe when you're struggling a little bit and not throwing the ball you want you're you're a little bit nervous and you're trying to find yourself. I mean, he'll drop down on right handed hitters as mm -hmm. well, which is usually not the case. Opposite pitcher right. to, to hitter will drop down, but he will. Gives them a different look. He's breaking his curveball a different path. And Altuve down on strikes. No runs to hit. One man left. We take it to the fifth. It's 4 0 Astros.
as the Yankees wrap up this opening series of the Astros. Coverage begins at 1 with Audi batting practice today. MLB opening week is presented by PNC Bank. And remember, if you get Yes on TV, then you get the Yes app for free. Or sign up for a subscription and never miss a Yankees game on Yes and the Yes app. We go to the fifth. Trevino leads off. Paula, I have bad news. Paul and Joe. Tomorrow's game's on Apple TV+. Plus. Saturday's on Fox. Now, you can turn to Yes for the postgame after the final out of each game, but what are you guys going to do for two days in Houston? You know what? I scratch my head when you tell me these schedule changes because I packed for the four days, and now we're only on TV for two. So I got all these extra clothes. Well, you're going to be naked the other two days? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, now I got my boots that I can't wear <laughs> that I brought to Texas. <laughs> Man, I feel so bad for you, Paul. I feel yeah. the pain. While I'm uh, here at Minute Maid Park, I'll be thinking, what, what is he going to wear? You, you know what? you got to be here because if we're not there, I need a, 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 an update once in a while. I'll shoot you a text, get an update of what's going on. Why don't you come hang out with me? You can come for the well, day you, you know want. what? That's, that's a little <laughs> over and beyond what we need to do. <laughs> you enjoy your day at the pool. So when's the last time you went to a game, just watched a game? I, yeah, I can't even tell. You don't know playoff games. Playoff games in Yankee Stadium. I almost convinced Michael to come tomorrow. Yeah. I might hang tomorrow. out as a fan. I might come tomorrow because I, I want to see where Don pitch. And I don't want to watch the game on a, a, an iPad. Well, I can text you for an update then, too. I, I didn't say it's a sure thing. But we'll <laughs> <laughs> He's not coming. No one checked in with Joe. Joe, are you coming or are you staying back? I haven't made up my mind. You are thinking about it, though. That's impressive. What else am I going to do? That's true. Joe was on the early bus today. Yeah, I, I, thought, early. I thought he mixed, missed text me. I, the <laughs> night before, I texted Joe. I said, what time is the bus? He texted me 9.30. I'm like, 9.30? It's a 3 o'clock game. You, that's a, a, missed, a misfire. And you know it wasn't. His next move was to me. Yeah. Is Girardi right on this? <laughs> One and one on Cabrera. Joe came to the, the production truck early, broke down video and graphics. He went to work early. One one. How about this? Valdez, left handed pitcher. It's the only thing he does left handed, everything else he does right handed. And if he does pitch right handed, he throws 85 miles an hour. Wow. So if he, God forbid, and blows out his left elbow, he just spins around. And Wasn't there a guy, is it Mississippi State or something that's a hard, like throws mid-90s, righty and lefty? Grounded up the middle, and off the glove of a diving Pena, base hit for Oswaldo Cabrera. Well, the Yankees are certainly getting base runners. They just haven't gotten the big hit yet. Yeah, they've had opportunities, and this is how you, you know, you... You get to a sinker ball or hit the ball hard and hope it finds a hole. And another hard hit ground ball could have easily been a double play, but it ends up getting by in the Yankees again. Bottom of the order. Starting things here. And here's the leadoff hitter, Glaber Torres, first and second. You know, it's interesting to me when you see a guy like Framber Valdez, who obviously is a ground ball pitcher, the exit velocity is 91 mm -hmm. off of him on average. It's 88 in Major League Baseball. He's like in the bottom 10% in baseball. So when he does have problems, it's when ground balls find holes. Right. It's not necessarily home runs. That's always about uh, sinkers. I mean, you can throw great sinkers, hit 15 ground balls, but they find holes. There are yeah. certain nights that happen. That's why I never was worried about facing really good sinker ball pitchers in the playoffs in the World Series because I always thought well, we're going to make contact and you know if you make contact and you have a good night luck wise you can put some numbers up even against some of the best. Well he is getting himself into a jam he's 3 0 on Torres on deck is Soto and after him is Judge. He's already walked five. Given up a number of hits. Given up four three hits. hits yep. Four hits. They've had base runners, and, and that's what we saw all spring training, base runners. Someone just needed to come up with that mm -hmm. big hit. Break the dam a little bit. Just clips the outside corner, three and one. Three 
in two. You can see Glaber not afraid to hit with two strikes. Looked like he was actually taking two pitches there to see if Valdez would dig himself a bigger hole. Three, two. He walked him. The bases are loaded with nobody out. And here comes Juan Soto. Now Soto has walked and struck out today, and he brings the Soto shuffle to the Bronx. He has 100 or more walks in four seasons, most all time to age 24. 19% walk rate, second highest in the expansion era. Only Bonds is higher. That's Barry. On base percentage, career 421. Third best all time through age 24. Can he work a walk here or get a big hit to count 0 and 1? He didn't like that call. Well, his last hit bad. He, you know, he got a pitch called out of the strike zone. James Hoy, supposedly a pitcher's umpire, has had some calls off the plate today. It, and I, I said to Paul, he has not called the low ball. You were correct on that. I said to Paul, I'd be all over Michael because he's. <laughs> Give me a false scouting report. Yeah. I spent all night coming up with that scouting report. One and one. Guys that walk a lot, they have an unerring belief that their eye is better than the up. And they, they get annoyed. Wade Boggs used to be like that. Blocked by Diaz. Well, the Yankees have had opportunities, but this is the opportunity that they need to catch up. And I, I, I think that uh, Soto thought he might have called this a strike. But you've got, to, you know, bases loaded. You've got Soto with the plate, Judge on deck. These are the opportunities with your big boys that you've got to put some runs up. Lined into right field, it is a base hit. One run scores. Soto's first hit is a Yankee. Drives in a run. The Yankees are on the board. It's 4-1 Astros. You know, what a great feeling to, to come through right in a big situation for its opening day. And look at this ball up in the strike zone. And you're going to see Juan Soto. He's able to handle this pitch because he doesn't have a huge uppercut. He stays through it off a tough lefty. You know, the Yankees are on the board. And the other thing that he does really well, Paul, is he goes down into his legs, so yeah. he's able to get under the ball with his legs. Here's Judge, bases loaded, nobody out. And there's a strike. At. Judge hit into a double play in the first and walked in the fourth. Big cut, 0-2. So I think sometimes you look at that first pitch that was called on him, it was below the zone, it was a strike. So as a hitter, it kind of makes you more aggressive, and then you start chasing it when you believed it was a ball. Check the swing, did he go? Yes, he did, said Rob Drake. Judge down on strikes. Again, he got ahead in the count, and then Aaron Judge kind of waved at this, and uh, clearly it was sinker, sinker, and then again, that, that, that hard cutter or curveball, whatever he wants to call it, down and into righties. Stan takes outside. Right hander Seth Martinez is up for the Astros. Four one Houston bases loaded one man out here in the fifth of the Yanks. Cleanup hitter stand at the plate. One and one. 
now all of a sudden he's giving him the low pitch that he wasn't calling before, and that looked like it was below the zone. Yeah, I was going to say is there's been some 50-50 pitches on the bottom of that strike zone, and that one went Valdez way. You know, you made a really good point about the sinker down and the curveball, how they look the same, mm -hmm. and they go opposite directions. And it's when he gets ahead of you, it becomes really tough as a hitter to try to sit on one or look in one area. Grounded foul. Cabrera at third, Torres at second, Soto's at first. One man out, one run in. Swing and a miss, got him. So he strikes out Judge and Stanton. Yeah, Judge down and in, Stanton down and away. Both guys saw the ball coming in and going away. Two huge outs for Valdez. Well, I think Anthony Rizzo's had two good at bats against him, right? The lefties have seemed to have some better at bats against him. He walked and he lined out to right field. He'd use a ball in the gap right here. And he gets hit. So Rizzo is down, clutching his hand. A run will score, but that's not the Yankees' biggest concern right now. Rizzo is used to being hit, but usually he gets up and goes to first right away. Yeah, this ball up and in, nothing. I mean, he does crowd the plate. But this ball, you're, you're not getting out of the way of this. This is a, you know, a, a tailing fastball up and into a lefty. And as I've said many times, you just don't pick up the ball as quick off a lefty. You just have no chance of getting out of the way. Well, we've talked about the run that he has on his ball. This ball starts on the outside corner and runs all the way mm -hmm. in across the plate. And you hope that it got him on the forearm where, you know, you, you got a little muscle and some meat instead of the hand. Take a look right here. I can't tell. Well, that's the last pitch Valdez will throw. That he's one out short of qualifying for win. He leaves the bases loaded. He's up 4 2, and the Astros and Joe Espada go to the bullpen. Anthony Volpe at the plate against a new Astro pitcher Seth Martinez. Now the back end of the Astro bullpen is very good. They have three of the best relief pitchers in baseball, but the bottom end of it not very good, and they've got to get some outs. Also, one of the top three guys is out by suspension, Brian Abreu. He was suspended because of a pitch he threw at a batter in the ALCS last year so he suspended the first two. Adolis Garcia yes. correct yep. yeah yeah you're right Neris is gone who had a great year 
Maton's gone, Stanek's gone, Graveman's gone. You take away Abreu, who was as good as anyone in baseball last year. They got new names and new faces. Tough situation for Martinez to come in because he's not a high leverage guy. And he really struggles with left handers, so they could keep the line moving. Well, Volpe has a single and a walk. He's 3 0 right here against Martinez. Bases loaded, two outs. That's ball four. That'll force in a run. Yankees have pulled him within one. It's 4 3. Well, the Yankees have had enough opportunities, and they're just allowing. Houston to dig themselves a hole by taking the walks, taking advantage of this inning right here, and another big at bat. You know, base hit, you either tie the game or take the lead. Well, against Valdez, 23 Yankees came to the plate, 12 of them reached. So he was walking batters, getting people on, hitting batters as well. Here's Verdugo, ninth batter to come to the plate for the Yankees here in the fifth. Kind of that three quarter arm slot, which I think it makes it easy for lefties mm -hmm. to see the ball. One and oh. I mean, look at these numbers that he had last year, Paul. Against left handers, he had 16 walks and 11 Ks. Against right handers, three walks, 34 Ks. Yeah, that's definitely an issue. Off speed pitch, check swing, ground ball, one and one. Verdugo blew up the single left and wrapped into a double play in the fourth. Yankees have had traffic on the bases. 1-1. One, 2-1. One. One. Yeah, if you look at it uh, in your Verdugo, you fouled that last pitch off. You had four consecutive balls to Volpe. Really three consecutive balls, so he's thrown seven consecutive balls. And you just don't want to leave the strike zone being anxious to help him out. Another one out of the zone, three and one. How hard is that to do, especially on opening day? New club. Yeah. I mean, do you, you know, remember when you came to the Yankees? I mean, were you really trying to make an impression? Oh, immediately. I mean, you, that's what you want to do. I mean, it, it's not spring training anymore. It's the season. This is what I'm here to do. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be opposed to taking another pitch. I mean, Martinez is struggling. Grounded to first, gobbled up there by Abreu, a step on the back. And the Yankees leave three on, but they do score three. It's 4-3 halfway through. In game parlay. See him right there. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their $5 bet wins. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today.
Audi scoreboard 4-3 Astros. Nestor Cortez still hanging in there. Alvarez leads off. Grounded sharply and a nice play by Rizzo to the glove side. Wow. A nice play by Cortez to get the out of first. Really good play on both parts there. Rizzo makes a great play and he gets rid of the ball early. Alvarez gets out and he's hustling. And then a great finish there by Nestor. I know one thing, he slides better than you do. Uh, I was going to say, it's pretty <laughs> athletic play for a yeah. pitcher, huh? Rizzo's always been an outstanding yeah. first baseman. Two gold gloves. Joe, how was uh, Nestor settled down? Fantastic. I, he threw 33 pitches in the first inning, and going into this inning, he was at 66. So 33 the, the next three innings. I mean, he settled down really nicely. As you know, he gave up the one home run in the second inning, but since then, he's been really good. You think his location's just better, or has he changed his pattern? I, I think he's changed a little bit. I think he's went away from right-handers a little bit, and he's made less mistakes too. He made some mistakes with his cutter in the middle of the plate. Jonathan Loaziga heating up. There's a strike two and two on Tucker. Tucker walked and scored in the first, struck out looking in the second. The count full. Swing and a miss, got him. Boy, he's not through it yet, but this is a really big inning to get through. You had Alvarez Tucker, and now you got Bregman after getting back into this game, only down a run. Well, we, that's we saw that same pitch in the open where he struck him out up and away. I mean, an outstanding pitch in a 3 2 count. Fifth Yankee strikeout brought to you by Audi in the 2024 Audi Q5. Visit your local Tri State Audi dealer today. Foul back here. Just Incoming. Underneath. Incoming. He didn't even flinch. Did you notice that? I had a good read on yeah. that one. <laughs> one and one. High pop up. Judge in center field will put it away. And Cortez retires the Astros in order. We got a ball game going to the six, four, three, Houston.
Oh, the Yankees extra pitching coach, Garrett Cole, going over things with Nestor Cortez. New pitcher for the Astros is Rafael Montero. And Cole is traveling with the team despite being on the 60-day IL. And he is a constant pitching coach, even when he's active. So he's really going to put his heart and soul into this. He's such a student of the game. Greg Maddox was like that. And I used to pick Greg Maddox's brain as a catcher where to go at times. You know what I like, Joe? He's already got the pitching coach hand over the mouth thing down. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to read his lips. <laughs> <laughs> Never know when you're on TV, Michael. He's on TV. The 2 1. Fly ball right field. Trevino. Trevino retired. Time for the injury report brought to you by Montefiore Einstein, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. We told you about Cole, right elbow inflammation, and DJ LeMay, right foot contusion, placed on the, the IL. What do you got, Meredith? Well, Michael, as you see, Garrett Cole is in the dugout, but DJ LeMay, who is still in Tampa, he had a light workout yesterday, but Aaron Boone said he would undergo some more tests to see how that bone bruise is healing tomorrow. As far as Garrett Cole is concerned, he's in the midst of a four-week shutdown period. As long as the elbow feels okay after that, they'll allow him to start a throwing program. But, guys, you got to think of it this way. He essentially needs an entire spring training of his own to get ready. He'll be starting from scratch. But when I did talk to him today, he said the elbow is feeling better. So encouraging news out of Garrett Cole. That's real encouraging, Meredith. And and like I think about it, he'll probably only throw in four or five games. I mean, usually a spring training, a pitcher will throw six. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're talking about build up, catch. I mean, it's it's going to take a while. It will, and they certainly aren't going to push him, Joe. That's a guy that they... Deep to right field off the bat of Oswaldo. See ya. Tie game. Cabrera hot at the end of spring training. Connects for a home run to tie the game at four. All of a sudden, you look at the scoreboard. Yankees have fought back four to four. First home run of the season, obviously, but... Cabrera with five last year, one on the board on opening day here. And you're right, Michael. He got up to a tough start. Uh, and mentally, that can be challenging for a guy that you know, is coming off a year where he went through some, some issues. But, boy, got hot at the end. And a big home run here on opening day. Last 11 games in the Grapefruit League, he was 9 for 24, 375. I believe he was 1 for 23 before mm -hmm. that. And as Paul said, they've come all the way back. They were down 4 nothing after two innings, and now they've tied it. Do you keep Nestor in there? Or do you, I mean, it's opening day. I think he worked hard early in the game. He's in a positive frame of mind now by shutting them down. Yeah, I would think that's probably it. He's probably close to 80 pitches. Mm -hmm. That down and in to lefties is dangerous. Yeah, good swing. I mean, uh, again, this is a great hitter's ballpark. If you can pull the ball, keep it out of the middle of the field, in the air in center field. You see, last year you saw a ton of movement, not a lot of movement there with his legs. You could sit back, wait. Ground ball is short. Pena. Two away. You know what also I see Paul is how quickly he gets his foot down and you think about Soto Soto's a guy that gets his foot down. I always wonder why they point at the bullpen. I've never understood that. <laughs> Who are you pointing at? Yeah. Because <laughs> if your wife and family are here they're behind home plate. They're not out in the bullpen right. I've asked Aaron Judge that who does it all the time. He said because they don't get any love they don't get to celebrate in the dugout. So I want them to be part of it. Nice. Just to keep hitting them to them. They're part of it. They'll pick it up. 1 0 on Soto. RBI single in the fifth. His first Yankee hit. He's been on base twice today. A walk in the first. Struck out looking in the third. The RBI single right in the fifth. You know, Montero had such a fantastic year in 22. 
in 71 games. You know, his ERA was low. He only gave up three home runs. Last year, hmm, 11 home runs in his 68 games pitched. Five ERA, over a five ERA. Low twos in 22. Soto's trying to get the Yankees the lead there, one and two. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, four four game. We're in the sixth. Soft ground ball left side, Bregman. Hustling down the line, Soto, but he gets gunned down for the final out. But the Yankees have come all the way back. Three runs in the fifth. This solo shot by Cabrera in the sixth. It's 4-4 right here on Yes. Yankee. This uh, former Yankee, 303 wins, all those strikeouts, five Cy Youngs. Paul, who is it? That's Randy Johnson, guy that I just owned in my career. Did you ever get a hit? Nope. Not I one. Fouled a couple balls off. Did you ever get hit? Nope. That's even more important. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Remember a story Don Mattingly told me the Yankees were playing in Seattle at the Kingdom. And Randy Johnson was starting. Mattingly knew he was starting. Mattingly played against everybody. <laughs> so he told me, he said, he spent the whole night just staring at the ceiling, saying, stay in there. Don't bail. Mm -hmm. Don't bail. The first pitch was at his head. Yeah. And he falls back, and he's staring at the ceiling of the kingdom. He said, well, that was a wasted night. Yep. <laughs> Slow ground ball to Volpe. He fields and fires and gets a break. So Jonathan Loaiza got on in relief of Nestor Cortez last year. Injury plague, 17 games, 0 and 2, 3.06. What they're going to try to do with Loaiza is make him this year's Michael King, where he'll pitch a couple of innings and then he'll be off for a couple of days. So he's a specialty reliever that King excelled at, and that's what they're going to do with him. Well, it's such an important position because starters usually don't go through the lineups right. the third time. So you need. Some relievers that can give you multiple innings, and he's one of those guys. And if it's an effective two innings, two and a third, you know, three innings, it's fantastic, and you'll take it. One and one. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to be facing that 98 mile an hour sinker running in at me like that. Every once in a while, I'll watch him in, in amazement. It's like, how can you ever give a hit up? I mean, he'll <laughs> go up to 101 with a sinker sometimes. And, and look at that. I mean, that's kind of like Framber Valdez, right? The same, and they both went different directions. And his sweeper's got a ton of sweep to it. I don't know how you could ever throw it for a strike. You got to start <laughs> it behind him. <laughs> throw it at the dugout and bring it in like the old track ball. Two and two. Did you have a track ball, Michael, that had the little black thing and you'd 
throw it and it put spin. I mean, it would go all over the place. No, I don't. I mean, the wiffle ball did that, but I'm, I'm talking track ball. No, we're not, well, never we had never it. Heard of that? That never reached New York. Yeah, or Illinois for that. <laughs> Three and two. Well, you got to give pretty good grades to Nestor Cortez. He struggled the first two innings, settled down, kept the Yankees in it, allowed them to chip back in, and he leaves and you know, gave them five. Gave up five hits and four runs. And you're talking about the fifth best offense in baseball last mm -hmm. year. It's a really good offense he faced today. And like you said, he got off to a, a slow start, but really settled down, only giving up one run in the last four innings. Popped up. Rizzo on the run. Trevino there as well. Trevino will make the play in front of the Astro dugout two away. Yeah, looking at Nestor, you just wonder if, you know, coming out, you know, the first couple innings were tough. Was, or Trevino kind of thought he was closer to the fence, I think, Joe, huh? Yeah, I, I, I'm looking for Riz on that ball. <laughs> <laughs> huh, Riz, come get it. Uh, that ended up in the pocket somehow. But Nestor, you just wonder if it was the nerves of opening day or if, you know, he just, you know, had it finally found a feel for, for his pitches. That's a base hit into right center field. Soto cuts it off. He'll get the ball in. So Diaz picks up his second hit of the afternoon. Well, I think Diaz, I mean, offensively is uh, really good as a catcher. You go back to what he did last year, not even as an everyday catcher. In his rookie year, 282, 23 home runs and 60 RBI. So there's a big upside offensively for him behind the plate. Jeremy Pena double his last time up. He's one for two. Troy in the truck was talking about it was like Posada replacing me, right? The the offensive <laughs> output. But Troy, I don't think I hit 191 in the big leagues <laughs> one year. <laughs> I mean, that ain't right. That one is looped into center field. That's a face hit for Pena. Going to third is Diaz. The throw to third, not in time. So first and third, two outs for the Astros. You know, Paul, they've done a, a really good job of staying inside yeah. that sinker. So that's from their right hand, it's, that's their approach. So he might have to change his approach a little bit. Well, that's going to bring up Jake Myers, and we'll take a look at his home run, the exit velocity presented by Spectrum. Wasn't staying inside here. This was an absolute missile right back there. Next to velocity 110, 415 feet. Trying to pick you up, Michael, and help you out a little bit. And you know what that earns him? It earns him getting taken out of a game. And they'll send up John Singleton to pinch hit for him. And the Yankees go to the mound to break down the scouting report. Again, one of those situations, two quick outs and now a couple hits, and uh, it's just a big time in the game, right? You know, you're running out of outs. You know the back end of the bullpen for Houston. So, again, uh, one good pitcher out of this jam to keep this game tied. So first and third, two men out, 4-4 four, four game on the bottom of the sixth inning. So Singleton pinch hitting for Myers. Tap right back to Loisega. So he works into and out of trouble. No runs, two hits, two men left. Let's go to the seventh. Good one, opening day, 4-4. Four, four.
hundred months. I made sixteen albums with me on the front and they front. Where you get your beats? I heard ninety three rappers say shit like me. All of that adds up to four four as we go to the seventh to the music of Too Short. Blow the whistle. Dubon takes over in center field. Ryan Presley takes over on the mound. Judge fouls out the first pitch. Presley was the closer. Lost the job when they signed Hader to a five-year, $98 million deal. And they called Presley right before they, they announced the signing. And, you know, what was he going to say? You're getting jo- you know, Josh Hader. So Presley turns out to be a really strong setup man for them. Yeah. See a lot of off speed, a lot of curveballs, a lot of sliders. Still has a fastball that can get up to 95. But I mean, I'm wondering if they're asking Presley and Hader to give them nine outs today. And Hader is known not to pitch more than an inning. Now, Presley, 90 saves over the last three seasons. Last three years in the postseason, his ERA is 0.34. And now he's going to set up for Hader. And he said, I get paid to go get three outs. It don't matter if it's in the fourth inning or the ninth inning. Whenever the phone rings and they tell me to get in there, I'll get in there. That happened in a situation where we had Andrew Miller closing one year, mm-hmm. and then we brought Chapman back. And Chapman became the closer. Andrew Miller said, I'll get whatever outs you want. It's just a joy to manage because he was willing to do whatever it took to win. Drill to left field. Will it stay fair? Yes, it is. It's a fair ball off the bat of Judge. His first hit of the season. And he will motor into second with a double. So the Yankees have the go-ahead run in scoring position here in the seventh. Well, it's good to see Aaron Judge get that hit in the hit column. And the hanging breaking ball. Presley doesn't do it much, but he kept it fair, which is very hard for a hitter to not hook this ball foul. Good swing by Aaron Judge. Here's Stanton. Slow ground ball. Bregman. One away as Judge stays put at second. He thought about advancing to third and then thought better of it. Yeah, there's so many things that go through your mind at second base there. Is, is Bregman going to move enough or is he going to be able to get back and tag me? Uh, I think Aaron Judge did the right thing. He's a dead duck if he tries to get past Bregman and beat him to third. Here's Anthony Rizzo. And a strike. There's a base hit to left field. Judge had to hold up to see if it got through. They'll hold him up at third. The throw is cut off by Bregman, so Rizzo picks up a single. Yankees have runners on the corners and one out. Really good job by Rizzo. Ball away, just shoot it the other way. And you're right, Aaron Judge has to wait to see if this ball gets in the hole. But the Yankees are in business here, first and third with one out. You know, you always wonder, I've always wondered how, like, a guy that's been a closer for the last three years Mm -hmm. the adrenaline they have in the ninth has to be different than what they have in the seventh and I think it's a role that he's going to have to learn how to pitch in again Volpe shows bunt takes a strike Volpe has walked twice once with the bases loaded so he has a ribby and also singled his first time up I love that play right there Joe you safety squeeze so many guys in by just putting the ball to the right side past the first baseman Altuve all the way over by second base 0-2 oh, on Volpe. And the other thing is Jose Abreu's having to hold on Rizzo, and it's not the most yeah. fleet of foot is one right. way of putting it. So if you get a little bunt down the first baseline, yeah. he's not going to get to it. Not with judges' speed. They, they're going to score. Now he's got to find a way to just put it in play. Just missed. One and two. From watching Presley in the past, so this is a place where you could see three or four consecutive breaking balls. As soon as he gets ahead, he loves to lean on that breaking pitch. And Judge at third, Rizzo's at first. One man out. We're in the seventh inning, 4-4. And maybe even more. 
foul back. That was a good one to hit there. Kind of a hanger up in the strike zone. A good approach. You can see he just got under it. Oh, see his eyes there. He's like, yeah. oh. Missed that one. One, two. Two and two. The game of cat and mouse speeding him up there a little bit. Yeah. So maybe he can throw another breaking ball. I used to like to do the head shake here. A mm -hmm. couple head shakes and then throw a fastball away where they think you're throwing a breaking ball. A curveball or a slider. He's got both. Boy, Volpe has been very, very patient in this game. The two walks, he's worked the count three and two. Yeah, and his slider's so hard. I mean, to be 90 miles an hour with that type of mm -hmm. depth, it's impressive. Will they hold Rizzo here? That's the question. Yes. They'll do it again. I think if you felt Volpe, if he would have had a year where he didn't strike out so much last year, you'd be sending Rizzo to mm -hmm. try to stay out of the double play. But you got a strikeout pitcher, a veteran on the mound. I think he's probably going to hold Rizzo here again. And he walked for the third time, and the bases are loaded for the Yankees again. Yeah, that's a great at bat. I mean, there were so many after digging yourself in a hole, they just a battle back and then take some pitches off the plate. Again, another huge at bat. <laughs> Opening day for Alex Verdugo. I think it's a small sample size, but what we saw from Volpe in spring training and what we've seen so far, he seems more patient. Mm -hmm. His leg kick's not as high. Right. He's under control. His swing is flatter. He should improve his numbers dramatic, dramatic, dramatically. Pitch to Verdugo is a strike. This is the first time that Presley has pitched in the seventh inning or earlier since game four of the 2021 World Series. 33 batters for the Yankees today. 17 of them have reached. One and one. It's a hitter with all the curveballs and sliders he throws. Would you just look down? You know, I hit off the fastball. You know, you're going to hit a mistake. If he throws this really good curveball down and in, you're not going to hit it anyway. It's right there. So, you know, you, you never want the pitcher to get into your head as a hitter. I'm looking fastball right out over the plate. I'll adjust to a bad curveball. And take my chances. Verdugo calls time. He picked up his first Yankee hit in the second, a blooper to left, and wrapped into a double play and grounded to first. Bases loaded with the Yankees at 4 4 or in the seventh. One man out. Judge sprinted down the third baseline. Don't know if that distracted Presley at all, but the count two and two. Stuff we used to do in Little League. <laughs> Hey, batter, batter. <laughs> See if we can rattle him yeah. a little bit. Two, two. Lofted to left field. McCormick will make the catch. Tagging his judge. Here he comes. Here's the throw. Not in time. A sack fly for Verdugo. And the Yankees lead 5-4. I mean, again, you really love the approach of the Yankees. Deep counts. You see some excitement over there. And I always felt that going the other way was the easiest way to kind of elevate the ball. And he almost just served that to left field. Scores Aaron Judge easily. Verdugo's first Yankee, Ribby. First and second now, two outs. Here is Trevino. 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. If you sit around and watch batting practice, right? Mm -hmm. The balls that are on the ground are always pulled. Sure. Right? And that's what you're talking about. I think the great RBI guys are the guys that are able to stay up the middle and right. the other way. One and one on Trevino. You stay out of double plays, which the Yankees have not done today so far. Right. They hit into three off of Valdez. Off speed, way out in front. Two. 
two and two. Three and two. That'll release the runners. Full count with two outs. So Rizzo will go from second. Volpe will go from first. Presley deals. Swing and a miss. Trevino down on strikes. But the Yankees take the lead. One run, two hits, two left. Time for the stretch in Houston. Yankees up by one. In part by FanDuel, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your $5 bet wins. By Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and by Buick. Visit your local Tri State Buick dealers. Yankees down 4 0. Now they lead 5 4, 5 8 0 for the Yanks, 4 7 0 for the Astros. Cortez battled after a rough first two innings, five innings, five hits. Soto, his first Yankee hit, first Yankee RBI and a walk. Framber Valdez fell one. Out short of five innings, and Jake Myers, a solo home run in the second. Oswaldo Cabrera, a solo home run in the sixth, and that's the one that tied the game at four. He's wide and high. Deep in the heart we are deep in the heart of Texas, Texas for four the days. The opening of the 2024 season. Deep in the heart of Texas. Big crowd here at Minute Maid Park. So when I was in Chicago Cup, yeah, Todd Van Poppel was a Chicago Cup, mm -hmm. and from Texas, and he's warming up on the mound in the seventh inning, singing this song, and I'm like, "That's the wrong team, sir." <laughs> you know who used to always sing the song? I mean, the whole song when the Yankees were playing the Rangers or the Astros, Ken Singleton. He, right? He loved that song. We definitely got a different playlist down here yes. between innings, huh? Got any exes in Texas, Michael? They, they, we haven't played that one yet. Huh? I don't have that good of a memory. <laughs> That's a great answer. Yeah. Too many foul tips. <laughs> <laughs> well, we go to the bottom of the seven. Now the Yankees are trying to protect the lead. Top of the Astros order against Jonathan Loizaga. Altuve will lead off. And a strike. You heard during the update, you heard from Bob and Jack and John Flaherty will join them as well on the post game. Great post game show following. Oris Meredith will be in the clubhouse asking all the questions. So that's a must stay after the game is over. Grounded, foul.
Altuve is 0 for 3. Up the middle and knocked down by Torres. He couldn't hold on. Trickles into center field. The leadoff single for Altuve. Torres shading way up the middle. Gets a glove on him. Sounds, sounds like a crack bat. Don't know if he would have got Altuve or not, but was not able to glove it. Inning plus three hits against Low Isaga. And here is Jordan Alvarez. Want to remind everybody, tomorrow night's game is on Apple TV Plus after the game. We'll have the Yes Post game. Saturday night's game is on Fox. After the game, we'll have the Yes Post game. Then back here on Yes on Sunday, a 2-10 first pitch and uh, please tune in and join us for Easter Sunday baseball. I have a little Easter egg hunt up here Michael. I like it. I'll hide them all over there for you. All right. What are you putting in the eggs? I don't know. We'll figure that out later. You know Michael likes uh, candy so I'll throw some candy in there some Atkin bars or something. Can you do that for Easter? <laughs> High fly ball left field. Verdugo will put it away to retire Alvarez and Altuve stays put. As Valdez had earlier in the game, I mean, Loisica has that same opportunity to try to get the ball on the ground. I mean, if he can get a ground ball, he can get out of this inning. Tough part of the lineup, obviously, Altuve, Alvarez, and Tucker. Seems like I say that about every other inning. These guys turn the lineup over, huh? You know, I learned something really important as a manager. Yeah. When you ask for something, you have to be specific. You want a ground ball hit to someone, not just a ground ball. Ah, good point. Ground ball in the hole doesn't help at all. No. It's Kyle Tucker. One and zero. Tucker walked and scored in the first, then has struck out twice. All three of his uh, appearances against Nestor Cortez. Lofted into left field. On the run is Verdugo, and he makes the play. Took an extra base hit away from Tucker as Altuve retreats to first. Really good break on the ball. Tough play. I mean, as a left-handed left fielder, you're reaching across your body to make this play in the gap. But, you know, you get into close games. These are the types of plays that can turn the game around. Really nice play. You know, Verdugo. What you see from that angle is how quickly he moves yeah. once that ball is hit. His reaction time was great, which helped him get to that line drive because that's going to score L2 mm -hmm. Here's Bregman, 0 for 3. Foul the way. Jordan, you should note some of the balls have been hit hard this inning off Lois ago where the ball's not sinking and it kind of flattens out. And I don't care how hard you throw this day and age, if it flattens out, it's going to get hit hard. We well, think about from a lefty too. It's kind of going out to the barrel mm -hmm. instead of coming in on a right hander. It's harder. You really have to pull your hands in. There's a base hit to right field. Soto gets the ball in moving to second is Altuve. So a single for Bregman. He's missed with a lot of pitches in this inning. Again, watch the location of this. Just kind of out over the plate and little movement downward. And Brakeman's just too good a hitter. Does a great job of just shooting the ball the other way. So many times when you get a young player in that situation, they try to do too much. Yeah. Where Bregman just kind of passed the baton, right? Just let me move Altuve to second or third and, and Hosey can drive him in. It's just this is a mature group of hitters and that's why they're so effective offensively. Here's a Brayu. And there's a strike 13 ribbies in 11 postseason games last year. After a somewhat pedestrian season he had 296 OPS of 945 
and four home runs in the postseason for Abreu. Let's take a look at the Yankee arms in the outfield. Well, you don't run on Verdugo, you don't run on Judge, and you run with caution on Soto. You see the max velo. Sometimes that average velo can be deceiving. The max velo is the one that you worry about because when they have to let it go, they can let it go. Verdugo probably being the best. 0-2. Swing and a miss. Wow. No throws needed from the outfield. As Abreu strikes out, the Astros strand two. Two shutout innings for Low Isaga. We go to the eighth. Day 50-50 raffle is now open. Friday, April 5th, home opener has a guaranteed starting jackpot of $50,000. One lucky fan will take home half the pot, and the other half benefits the Yankees Foundation. Buy your tickets now at yankees.com slash 50-50. I'm a little bit curious, Paul. I have not seen you eating throughout this whole game, and there's a lot of stuff available here at the ballpark. You know Look what? at that. Wife's in town, some friends are in town. Don't think we're not going to dinner somewhere. See, I knew it. I knew it. There had to be big plans. <laughs> I have not seen you having any ice cream, the whole deal. How many desserts you had today? I just had a cookie. Taylor Scott takes over. Not a dessert. Did you have ice cream? No. Yes, I did, but that Thank was for you. my throat. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't for pleasure. Now, wait a minute. You had a piece of cake, too, I saw. Yeah. That was by accident. <laughs> <laughs> Still early. You can throw a couple more things in. <laughs> you notice, Joe, that you know Paul and Neville didn't invite us to dinner tonight. No. 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 Fend for yourselves. Cabrera two for three. Let's take a look at uh, Cabrera's home run that gave the Yankees the lead. Now, tied the game, should I say. 99.6 off the bat. Traveled 381 feet. Sky the other way. All right, so Cabrera has a day like this. You start him at third again or birdie? You know, the one thing that you like to do is you like to get everyone involved early. You know, so they don't sit a long time in between at bats. Mm -hmm. So... I would think you might see Birdie tomorrow. Pena gets Oswaldo Cabrera. And on the other hand, Michael, if I'm Cabrera and I hit a big home run on opening day and I don't make the game, I don't make the lineup on game two, I'm not real happy. I, I see, I hear both sides. Yeah. So we'd have had some conversations if you'd have managed me, you know that? We had some conversations when I played alongside of you about days off too. Yeah. I wasn't a big fan of him. So Joe Torre would come and say, Paul, you know, why don't you take today off? He'd tell him that poor and Joe's like, 
Paul would be like, no, I want to play. So he'd go for four. And he'd go to me. I'm thinking, why didn't you tell me to take the day off? I said, well, you didn't ask me. <laughs> That's my reason in the, in the, in the, the, the clubhouse, Michael. If I, if I had to have somebody reason things out for me, you know, to, to get a clearer conscience on everything, I'd go right to Girardi. Fly ball, center field. Dubon. That'll bring up Soto and brings us to the Audi Electric Moment. Experience a fully electric Audi vehicle, your local Tri-State Audi dealer today. This is Soto's first Yankee hit. Yeah, high fastball stays through it. I mean, uh, and you could tell. Uh, I don't care who you are. There's some emotion there. Opening day, Yankees. First run on the board. Soto has walked in single. One for three. And there's a strike. I always felt like was managing games that the hardest run to score was the first one. I agree a hundred percent. Once you got on the board you felt like you know what well, <laughs> we can do this. It's no problem when you just keep having opportunities and don't cross the plate. It's like it's just not meant to be to them. They had the bases loaded in the second didn't score the bases loaded in the fourth didn't score and then in the fifth they finally broke through with the bases loaded single so Sometimes you wonder if it's just going to be one of those days yeah. where nothing goes their way, but they found a way to get the lead. I wonder if Soto is going to walk as much as he has in his career with Judge hitting behind him, or, or will it be less? Will it be the same? I think it'll probably. Be, uh, pitchers really don't want to throw strikes uh, when it comes down to it. They really don't want to challenge great hitters and throw strikes. And as you've seen, Soto, he doesn't leave the strike zone very often. So unless they figure that out, he's going to continue to to walk. Well, he's been up five times, 25 pitches, yeah. a single and two walks. Here's the other thing I think. I don't think pitchers as much today look ahead who's on deck as right. they did years before. But they've got to know judges on deck. Well, I mean, you can see him from, you know, <laughs> outside the building. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I'm saying? They're worried about just focusing on getting that hitter. And I don't know. And if you're a righty, I would, you know, do you want to face judge or do you want to face, you know, Soto? I mean, they're both extremely dangerous. You still think it comes into play where, you know, Soto's lefty. Judge is righty. Uh, I got a better matchup. They're both great players, but I got a better matchup with Scott being a right hand. Yeah, I mean, that's how I would probably think. Hanger inside just fouled it back. <laughs> It hung too much. It never broke out over the plate. I mean, as a hitter, your eyes light up. And watch, this ball just stays on plane right there. It doesn't. Actually kind of ties Aaron Judge up because it didn't break. <laughs> That's luck. Yeah. Soto leads up first. Judge one for three with a walk. He doubled in the seventh. Swing and a miss. Judge down on strikes. And that'll do it in the eighth. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left. Yankees lead by one. We go to the bottom of the eighth.
In the Yankee Stadium with the Yankees calendar day. All guests at the Yankees game on Sunday, April 7th, are going to receive a Yankees calendar courtesy of MasterCard. Tickets are going fast, so get yours today at yankees.com. Hyundai scoreboard. 5-8, no Yanks. 4-9-0 and for the Astros. New Yankee pitcher following two innings of shutout ball by Loisega. Is Ian Hamilton. Just an outstanding year last year, and he's got fastball touch 97, 98. Really good slider. I think they call it the Slambino, or what is this? Slambio. 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 Yankees seem like they find these guys and they build really, really strong bullpens. And this year it seems like it's it's Birdie. Nick Birdie it was unbelievable in spring training. And he was warming up in the first inning. Two and zero on Chaz McCormick. There's a strike. So one of your grandchildren is Charles. Do we go with Chaz sometimes for him, Paul? No, uh, it's Charles, or Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. He's got a picture. He has his Yankee uh, shirt and hat on today, running around the house or is, crawling around the house. Is he watching Grandpa? Well, I don't know if he. Knows me uh, by name on the, on the air yet? But I was sure to see the picture. Two run single for McCormick in the first fly ball to right and a foul out to Trevino. Three one count. Now three and two. Hey, T-Mobile customers get free MLB TV. Redeem now through April first at T-Mobile.com/MLB. Did he go? Yes, he did, said Rob Drake. McCormick down on strikes, one away. And he did. And there has to be some deception to Hamilton's fastball, too. You see this really good slider, the location of it. Because McCormick was in a 3-1 count, and he was late mm -hmm. on his fastball. Yiner Diaz takes outside. I don't know that I, enough people talk about that. You know, you see a guy throwing 98, 99, but don't get any swing and misses. Everything's fouled yeah. off or hit hard. I, I like the guys that throw 95, 96 that guys are swinging through it. And, and I think it means a lot. I don't know how you equate it into spin rate or location, whatever. But some guys get swing and misses. And some guys with great stuff don't. I mean, hitters will come back and say, like, it, it's playing up. You yeah. know, it doesn't it doesn't look 94, 95. It, it looks like 97, 98. But it's really hard as a hitter to tell yourself mm -hmm. that. But as you look, he hides the ball. He's kind of faced to the the on deck circle. That was a strike. We talked about Valdez early in the game where he was always on the right side of the rubber. But see, with a righty, it creates that crossfire, which you're talking about. Off the glove of a lunging Rizzo, it's a base hit as it trickles into right. So Diaz with his third hit of the night. Diaz continues to have great at bats. I mean, uh, again, you, you see shadows, everything. And Rizzo knocks it down, not able to glove it. With his third hit of the day. So here's Jeremy Pena. He's two for three. After winning the World Series MVP in 2022, down year for Pena last year. Starting off the 2024 season with two hits and three at-bats. Diaz leads off first. Swing and a miss. You know what I find interesting, Paul, is his... Home runs went from 22 to 10. Mm -hmm. His K rate went down and his walk rate went up. But I think that now he's cut down on his leg kick. Right. 
and raised his hands. Let's see if they get two. There's one. And there's two. A 4-6-3 double play. We got a one-run game. Stop biting your nails. Stick around for the ninth. As the Yankees wrap up this opening series of the Astros, coverage begins at 1 with Audi batting practice today. MLB opening week is presented by PNC Bank. And remember, if you get Yes on TV, then you get the Yes app for free. Or sign up for a subscription. Never miss a Yankees game on Yes and the Yes app. Remember, Friday's game is on Apple TV+. Plus. Saturday is on Fox. But you can turn back to Yes for the post game after the final out. And then we're all back on Sunday. Sellout crowd here at Minute Maid Park. It's officially 42,642. And they've seen a pretty good opening game as the Yankees lead 5-4. And the big free agent pickup for the Astros, Josh Hader, will come on. You see what he did last year with the Padres. What a season. So since 2017, fourth in saves, first in ERA, first in opponent batting average against first opponent slugging. And 42.2% strikeout percentage. Swing and a miss. Is that good? I guess so. You know, there's some guys that are just more fun to watch from the booth than the box. And, uh, <laughs> this is one of them when I take a look at this guy. Now, the Astros signed into a five year, $95 million deal. And that's the biggest in present day value for any reliever in history. Edwin Diaz of the Mets has a $105 million contract, but has $26 million in deferred money. So that goes down to 93. As Hayter strikes out Stanton. I mean, that's like high school numbers, though, isn't it? I mean, you're, you're striking out over 40% of the people. Yeah, that is that is amazing. <laughs> now, Hayter is an elite closer, but he has ruffled some feathers along the way. He has a reluctance to go for any four-out saves. He has not done that since August of 2020. He says up and downs are more taxing than the amount of pitches you throw. And he likes the regular routine of being a one inning closer. My question is being here and having a five year deal. Maybe times have changed. Huh? Times might change yeah. a little bit. Right? That happened early on in his career when he was. A lot of two inning saves and he was pitching a lot. And I think players worry about getting hurt especially mm -hmm. when you're relievers because. Unless you're a closer or a back end guy it's hard to get paid until you get past your free agent year. He had to get that and was handsomely rewarded. Mariano didn't have any problems going more than one. Mariano Rivera was the most efficient pitcher I ever caught. He was a fantastic athlete. Two and two on Rizzo Rizzo. One for two. Walk, yep. and he was hit by a pitcher with the bases loaded, so he picked up a ribby. You talk about Mariano and efficiency. I, I'll never forget, you told me something I thought was so interesting. You said you really have to watch where you put the target to Mariano. 
because he would hit your target time and time again. Club doesn't and, move. And if you would, you know, give him a target just out over the plate, it could get hit. But if you gave it just in off the plate, unhittable. So far, Hader is 100% strikeout percentage. He struck out Stan and Rizzo. And that'll bring up Volpe, who's had a perfect day. He's one for one with three walks, and he walked with the bases loaded, so he has a ribby as well. Yeah, I look back at that walk with the bases loaded, and that really set up that inning. And, you know, he came from an 0-2 count to end up drawing a walk. It really changed that inning. The other thing that Mariano was so good about, the eight pitches that you get on the mound, he used that as part of his warm-up. So he wasn't completely ready when he left right. the bullpen, where most pitchers are, and a lot of times they overthrow. They throw too much. Mariano never did that. I used to get nervous. I, I'd call down and, and say, Hart, is, is he going to get going? <laughs> 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 We're going to need him soon. Hark would laugh at me every time I called. Now, if you want to look ahead to the bottom of the ninth, when Clay Holmes will come on, It'll be 9, 1, and 2. So you'll see Altuve and Alvarez with the game on the line. One and two on Volpe. Hader deals. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the ninth. Strike three. Volpe did not like the call. Hader strikes out the side. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning as the Yankees try to hold on. For post-game coverage, as Bob, Jack, and John will have full highlights and analysis, Meredith gets player interviews in the clubhouse, and we'll hear from Aaron Boone on the manager's report. It's the season premiere of the WB Mason Yankees post-game, the first of 162 of these babies, all on Yes and the Yes app. Hey, check out and follow Yes Network on TikTok for more content. All right, they turn now to their closer, Clay Holmes. Nestor Cortez went five. Loisega went two, Ian Hamilton went one. The formula works right up to Clay Holmes as he'll try to get the final three outs. So it'll start off with Mauricio Dubon, the number nine batter. Jake Meyer started one for two with a home run. Singleton then pinch hit in the six. He grounded back to the mound. Now Dubon, who took over in center, will lead off. Up and in. How's that for your first pitch of the year? <laughs> and very quickly, Anthony Rizzo goes to the mound, knocks some dirt out of his spikes. 
Sometimes Holmes can get a little amped up on the mound, and we see that. But he has to self-correct. Line drive, base hit. Astros have the tying run on. You know what's impressive about that? After that first pitch, you lock in and look for a ball out over the plate and just line it to right field? It's not that easy. Wow. You see Trevino jumping with Rizzo, hoping that he could help yeah. him get up a little bit more. Almost looked like Clay Holmes was, you know, kind of guided that ball in there after the first pitch. And, you know, it takes a little movement off the pitch by not, you know, really following through. And Dubon, again, great piece of hitting. Here's Altuve, one for four. Loop to second base. Clay Torres makes a basket catch on the broken bat looper. Wow, that's a shattered bat there. Barrel ended up out at shortstop. I'd hit a ball like that. Rick Sutcliffe would tell me the ball's not carrying the second base. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what? There were two days I always worried about pitchers. Opening day. Yeah. Their, or their first game. And after the All-Star break, their first game after the All-Star mm -hmm. break. Because they were the out break. of their routine. Yeah. Here's oh. Alvarez. One for four. Ground it and grabbed there by Glaber Torres. He can't get a hold of it and throws wide. As Dubon moves to second, Alvarez reaches. So the time runs at second, the winning runs at first. Well, Glaber gets there, but not able to glove it. Joe, you asked for ground balls, but you got to ask for ground balls right at people, right? And this is what happens. Again, I think if Glaber comes up with this cleanly with Alvarez running, he's got a shot. But not there. So now one of the more underappreciated players in baseball. Top five in the MVP last year. He's simply one of the better players in the game. Kyle Tucker. In a big spot. Time runs at second. Led the AL in RBIs last year with 112. Was one home run away from 30, 30 club, 30 stolen bases. Walked and scored in the first, struck out in the second, and the fifth fly ball to left in the seventh. First and second, one man out, bottom of the ninth. The Yankees leading 5 4. Holmes deals. Want to know? Dubon at second, Alvarez at first. There's a base hit to right field. Dubon rounds third. They're waving him home. Here's the throw from Soto. Here's the play. He's out. Oh, they got him. They got him. A great tag by Trevino, and Soto got rid of it quickly for the second out. Well, obviously, you got to wait because of the replay and if they're going to challenge, but what a great throw. I mean, this is big league baseball here on opening day for Juan Soto. Got him, huh? Wow, that's, that's really, really close. You know, Houston is challenging. Looks like he gets him right the there. The yeah, I don't think his hand got all the way extended. It almost stopped before it got home plate. And Trevino, Joe, you can speak to this. I mean, this is a tough play. Trying to reach that ball and get over the, you know, he's going to slide away from you. Yeah, you have to let the, the momentum of the ball take you. And it's a little bit up the line, so he has to reach. And I think he nicks him there. I don't know if there's an angle that's perfect that you can right. see if it actually touches him. So I think it would be hard to be overturned. Well, remember the call on the field is out. Right. Is there enough to to overturn this? Did a lace get him? Did he get the blouse of the shirt? I mean, we talked so many times about what a great hitter Soto is, but he had 10 outfield assists last year. And and his max velocity was 94 miles an hour. It's a better arm than people give him credit for. 
Well, a lot has to do with how quick you get rid of the ball too and how straight your throw is. We've always talked about you know Aaron Judge how true his throw is. Well you know Juan Soto got in on this ball quick and got rid of it instead of you know that extra wind up that allows that run to score. So much on the line on this replay. As the Astros are challenging the crowd seeing the play on the big board in right center field. You know Paul you make a great point. It's how quickly you get the ball in the air. So yeah. what, so so what happens is you got to charge it quickly and you're going to see him charge this ball really hard and you got to get it in the air quick and he does that as well and it's really pretty accurate which gives them the chance to get Dubai. I still look like he got him there. Obviously I'm not the umpire. Yeah but your opinion matters to me. Is that right. Well I'm, I'm calling him out then. I'm leaving it as is. <laughs> Here's the call. After review, there was no blocking on the play. After review, the call stands, runners out. Houston will lose their challenge. There you go. Yankees out of the way. So they looked at two things, whether he blocked the play, which he didn't. And whether or not they could see if he missed the tag, which they couldn't see, so the call stands. I tell you what, that was a great play. I mean, picture perfect of getting to the ball, getting rid of the ball. I mean, in a, in a 5 4 game in the bottom of the ninth. Here's Bregman. 1 0. Well, of all the parts of Soto's game, they say, well, the, the weakest is the. Uh, the the defense but all those assists last year he's getting people out grounded to short this should do it and it does the Yankees win 5 4 a thrilling opening day victory for the New York Yankees Soto with a big defensive play his first single his first RBI and the Yankees come back from a 4 0 deficit to win this one 5 4. Well, it didn't start off pretty, but I, you know, the Yankees really fought back. Soto made his point, and, and again, I think they stole this game. You look up at the score, but they left 10 men on base. Had some double plays early, but what a great way to start the season. An exciting game for the Yankees. And the other thing that's exciting to me is the offense kept at it, kept at it, kept at it. And I don't think they had that ability last year. I think this is a different lineup. I think there's an improved Anthony Volpe in there. You add Soto, Verdugo. It's a much better lineup. And they're going to have to win some games like this, and that's a special win. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the smile on Aaron Boone's face. The Yankees have struggled against the Astros through the years, and to come away with a victory like this after your starting pitcher gives up three runs in the first inning, and then your newest acquisition with a big defensive play. He's feeling it. The Yankees are feeling it. The captain is feeling it. And you know what else? They got themselves a victory. 5-4 here in Houston to open the 2024 season.